Hi, this is Little Dwarf playing games while rambling incoherently into a microphone. Why? Well, just because they can, and they continue with The Witcher modded. Now, this episode again will be nothing but me just reading all of the update, uh, updated uh, journal entries. So, if you're not interested in that, you can just skip it, because there will be no, literally no gameplay in this. Um, which will resume from the next episode, so let's get to it. As a jabbed, the mage, the mage that who had, uh, the mage who attacked Kermorin in order to steal the Witcher's secrets hidden in the fortress. One of the leaders of the forces that attacked Kermorin was a mage so powerful that even Triss Merigold could not oppose him. The organization that he leads uses the symbol of a salamander. The mysterious mage using the salamander symbol is a skilled alchemist who is researching mutation. The mysterious mage is Azar Javed, an exotic name, suggesting that he comes from a distant place. The mage is in hiding, yet his influence extends over the whole of Vizima and possibly beyond. My adversary is a renegade mage. This means that for some reason he was expelled from the wizard's circle. In the past, renegade mages performed the witcher's mutations. The man I'm looking for is addicted to Fistech. He takes large amounts of drugs in its purest form. Even the most powerful men have their weaknesses. Azar Javed likes to bask in luxury. I have learned that Azar Javed has po political ambitions, which is quite typical of wizards. He specializes in the element of fire. Not only does the mage use fire magic for great, with great expertise, it seems that fire has become a part of his being. Carmen. I met Carmen, a prostitute from Vizima's slums. All the locals' trumpets value her opinion, and it could be said that Carmen is their representative. Mm, Dandelion. I've heard rumors that the famous bard and poet Dandelion visited the outskirts. I've met Van Dandelion, who supposedly has always been my best friend. From what I've heard, Dandelion is an indefatigable windbag, a buffoon and a wastrel. He is also a womanizer with an inc incredible talent for getting into trouble. At the same time, he is a truly talented artist, despite his tendency to wander to the countryside and eke out a living through occasional performances. Declan Loivarden I met Declan Loivarden, a rich merchant from Nilfgaard at the inn at the, in the outskirts. Loivarden seems a resourceful and wealthy man with extensive contacts. Mm. He lives in the trade quarter of Vizima. During the day he can be found on the dike from where he runs his business. Not all of his businesses are legal. He prefers to keep some of the deals very quiet. The city guards are used to receiving bribes from Leuvarden, who clearly isn't the city's most law-abiding citizen. It seems Leuvarden belongs to a secret organization. He refused to reveal any details. Golan Vivaldi is a dwarf who's very touchy about his race. The Vivaldis are financiers and one of their banks are lo is located in Vizima's trade quarter. The money from the professor's bail came from Vivaldi's bank. That's how the criminal walked free. Vivaldi lost control of the family business. There was a hostile takeover and the bank is now controlled by human owners. This explains the dwarf's bitterness as well as his poverty. I unfairly suspected Vivaldi of sal financing Salamandra. The evidence indicates that he is innocent. Vivaldi has relations with non-humans, including the persecuted Scoyatel. Half-elves. Vizima is also home to half-elves, born of unions between humans and elves. Female half-elves are possessed of a delicate, imitable beauty. Many are fluent in the el elder language. Mm, Jetro. Jetro is a guard in a city dungeon. He would merely be a standard smartass, except that he is addicted to Fistek. Kalkstein. The absent-minded alchemist seems nice, but it is obvious that his scientific theories are of greater concern to him than the prosaic aspects of life. Kalkstein has dealings with Vizima's crim criminal underworld. Mm. Kalkstein has dealings with Vizima's criminal underworld. Strange company for an alchemist to keep. 
Even though he calls himself a scientist, Kalkstein is an alchemist, so he definitely doubles in magic. Kalkstein is the author of many alchemical works, including a treatise on analyzing attempts to animate inanimate mat matter, an activity known otherwise as constructing a golem. Apparently the alchemist has been interested in the matter for years. Kalkstein Kalkstein's convoluted style makes his work difficult to read. I have proved that Kalkstein is not as the Salaman is not the Salamandra leader. I'm glad because I've actually grown fond of the alchemist. For the first time since I arrived at Ker Morin, I saw a truly happy man. The door to the tower in the swamp stood wide open, and at the thought of all of the alchemi alchemical secrets waiting inside, Kalkshain was as delir delirious as a drunken dwarf. Uh, the Professor One of the leaders of the Salamandra attack on Ker Morin was a man called the Professor, who seemed to be a cunning assassin. The other leader was a mage. It turned out that the assault of on Kerr Moran was not the professor's first foul deed. The arrest warrant shows clearly that my opponent is a wanted man. The professor was released from the dungeon right in front of my eyes. He mocked the law and, and proved to me just p how powerful Salamandra is. Uh, Ramsmead. His boys react nervously to the symbol of the Salamandra. It is evident that they have some links to the organization. I met Ramsmead, the leader of a gang from a temple quarter. He didn't make a good impression. I think the feeling was mutual. The thug probably had something to do with Berengar's disappearance. Ramsmead sent his people to St. Lebiota's hospital. His bandits attacked me when I tried to interrogate the prisoner being kept here. Mm, uh, Raymond Marlov, detective. I hired a detective named Raymond Marlov to help me search for Salamandra's leader. Raymond, a bitter and cynical man, refused to lift a finger until I paid him, but he also seems to know a lot, including his craft. Someone has assumed the detective's identity and I can prove it. I found the detective's body. Someone discovered I was working with him and clearly didn't like that. They killed him and assumed his identity. I need to know why. Uh, Siegfried. Secrets of the, of the Nell. A knight of the Order of the Flaming Rose is an idealist who adheres to the Order's rules but is not devoid of common sense. Polite and open, he is unlike many of his brothers from the Order in that he is not prejudiced. He is undeniably courageous and demonstrated this when he descended alone into the sewers to fight the Cockatrice. Siegfried and I defeated the Cockatrice together. The knight proved both polite and a skilled swordsman. Uh, Thaler uh, Defense's circle of influence is really wide. It also includes city guards. In the temple quarter of Vezima lives a fence named Toller. He has things that belong to Berengar and also deals in illegal goods. The fence is a repulsive man and uses particularly foul language. During the day he can be found in the store, which is located in the house in the temple quarter. Toller put Bereng Berengar's witcher equipment up for sale. I wonder how he acquired those things. For a fence and a thug, Thaler is, has surprisingly extensive contacts, not only with thieves but also among the affluent. There was a circumstantial evidence suggesting that Thaler was working for the Salamandra, yet he proved to be innocent. It turned out that Thaler is a chief of the, of the Temerian intelligence and that his fence guys is simply one of the many assumed personalities. Uh, Tris Merigold uh, along with me and the other witchers, Triss fought in defense of Ker Morin. The sorceress stood against the mysterious mage, one of the leaders of the assault. She, she was injured and lost consciousness. Ironically, Triss is allergic to magic and she can only be administered natural healing, natural healing potions. Triss Merigold is my friend. She saw me die and my return to the world of the living surprised her. She is a sorceress, one of the most influential and tar talented of her kind. She has numerous powerful friends and she knows that the Kermoran witchers. She is one of the few people who know the way to the fortress. I have a feeling Triss likes me a lot. After Leo's funeral, the sorceress teleported to Vezima. She decided to use her extensive contacts and search for information on Salamandra. She promised to find me as soon as I arrive in Vezima. Tris found me in the swamp, where I, where I lie unconscious after my clash with, with Azar Javed. She transported me to, to her house in the trade quarter and took care of me until I came around. 
Lying there awake, I overheard Tris gossip with her friends on the magic communicator, and I now know that the other sorceresses are also interested in the salamandra. Vaska. Vaska is a leader of the brickmakers who live in the swamp. She talks in riddles and seems a bit crazy. She seems to worship the water lords, probably Vodianoi, and is quite touchy when it comes to them. Uh, Vincent Mice. The captain of the city guard released the professor, one of the most wanted criminals in Temeria. Vincent is the captain of the city guard and the main executor of the king's laws in the temple quarter. Vincent Mice was one of the few that knew I was going into the sewers to kill the cockatrice, and that I could only leave by the exit where I encountered the salamandra bandits. On his orders, the city guards are forbidden to talk about Salamandra. People say it's impossible to get in touch with Mace at night. After dark, the captain vanishes into thin air. The captain of the city guard is innocent. I have evidence to prove that he wasn't collaborating with the Salamandra. Yavin is the elf as conceited as he is eloquent. He seems cunning and wise. Moreover, he despises humans, considering them aggressive barbarians, and has only respect for the elder races. Still, this, this, this illusioned elf treats me with a respect of his own peculiar way. Everything suggests that he even is preparing for battle. In the swamp, he has created a training camp for the Skoyatel under his command. The Skoyatel, led by Yavin, defeated the Order of the Flaming Rose during the clash in the Gol Golem Burial Ground. Zoltan Chivai I helped a dwarf being attacked by racist. He recognized me as an old friend of his. The, name's, the dwarf's name is Zoltan Chivai. He claims to have witnessed my death years ago in Rivia. Zoltan seems reasonable and pragmatic. He takes the world with a grain of salt and sees irony in most things, just like other non-humans. He also seems vexed by the racist atmosphere in Temeria. Zoltan managed to get into the temple quarter. The dwarf was so happy to see me again. Locations Detective's house As in many large cities of the north, in Vizima one can enlist the service of a private investigator, an expert in sensitive issues, discreet investigation and tracking suspects. Detective Raymond Marlov is available at the office day and night. Dungeon the dungeon is where the criminals unlucky enough to fall into the hands of the city guard are kept. Prisoner turnover in the jail is relatively high. Some are released, usually after a while, while others are ex executed on the scaffold. Captain Vincent Mace of the city guard is the jail's warden. The dungeon affords access to the sewers, which run under the entire city of Vizima. Harry Bear Inn is a place for indiscriminate quiet clientele. The innkeeper obviously holds back on the lie, although he waters down the ale generously enough. Patrons share the thin mattresses with rats, but almost everyone can find their entertainment of choice here. Illegal fistfights, a fistfight enthusiast, hustlers and drunkards will all fi find something to do at the Hairy Bear. It is said that you can even buy illegal drug fiste here, provided you know a dealer named Coleman. A mage's tower. Uh, Ain Sofaur is a tome that the ta de details uh, that details in a very tangled manner where to look for the sepirot, the stones which will open the tower in the swamp. The first stone is a wise person, the second will come with freedom, the third stone is in possession of someone wealthy, while a merciful person has the fourth. The three other stones are guarded by a girl, a mother and an old hag, and they can be abstained through sacrifice and prayer. The eighth sepiroth is hidden underground in the swamp and guarded by death. The ninth might, must be obtained by fighting the guardian, while the tenth and the final one will be a reward for the tenacious seeking the truth. The Secret Gates recounts the story of a mage who built a tower in the swamp. To erect the building on the marshland, the sorcerer had to tame the element of earth and protect the tower with spells. While delving into the secrets of magic, the sorcerer trifled with the forces of nature. The mage was betrayed by his beloved. A magical cataclysm ensued and a catastrophe struck. The mage perished and all of his works were sealed in the tower. In the swamp, a mysterious, mysterious building stands out from its surroundings. A tall stone tower, its doors locked, and an eerie silence reigns in the area. As if, 
as if even the birds are able to, to sense the strange aura that surrounds it. Non-human district. A separate area that has been designated for elves and dwarves in Vizima's temple quarter. Members of those races live and work there. Those who venture into the non-human district do it at their own risk. Sewers. Uh, the sewers beneath Vizima were built in an age when an elven city stood at the site. Not much of their original greatness remains, but they still serve their function well. Connecting the temple quarter and the trade quarter, they carry off sewage from the entire city, rendering the stench of the gutters a little less overbearing. The sewers have recently be become infested with monsters, especially drowners. Apparently, a cockatrice has also made its lair there. Secluded and rarely visited, the sewers have become an ideal refuge for the worshippers of the cult of the lion-headed spider. Shani's home. It's easy to find Shani's house because it's located by the statue of the Road of, of, of Asclepius. The building is owned by an old lady with a difficult personality. One has to carry favor with her to get inside. St. Lebioda's Hospital, named after the prophet Lebioda, was set up in the former temple of Melitale. To this day, a triple-bodied statue of the goddess stands inside. N nurses and novices work there, trying to help those struck by the plague. It is not a pleasant place, filled with the moans of the suffering and the stench of their excretions. Those who do not survive the disease, meaning the overwhelming majority, are thrown into a pit behind the hospital. Every once in a while, the bodies are burned, to prevent the plague from spreading. Recently, the Order of the Flaming Rose placed, placed the hospital under its protection. Mm, the Swamp Across the lake from Vizima lies a large area of marshlands, which is home to a small human community, but also to various monsters. It is not safe there, even during the day. A drowner or a blazoiger can spring from the murky water at any moment. The casual traveler should also be mindful of the misleading will-o'-wisps, which have a tendency to lure unwary travelers further and further into the swamp, until they become mired in mud and perish. To reach the swamp, one must hire a ferryman at the dike in Vizima and take the boat across the lake. A group of lumberjack work, lum, lumberjacks work deep within the marshlands, making money by selling lumber to Vizimian craftsmen. They are led by a dwarf named Yaren Bolt, who rules a small community with an iron fist. The swamp is home to the brickmakers, who make their livings excavating and f firing clay. Mm, the, theirs is a small secluded village, where life proceeds at its own pace. A somewhat crazed woman named v Vaska leads them. The swamp is a place where man, man must bow before nature in all its wild, tan tangled grandeur. This is why the druids have settled there, establishing a sacred grove with the tree of life at its center. The disciples of nature allow no violence within the grove, where they tend to sick animals, even taking in the wounded dryads. The misty marshes hide many secrets. For example, there is a small clearing where statues of powerful golems are half buried in mud, as if frozen mid-step. One of them is particularly unsettling, towering ominously over the clearing. Uh, temple Quarter uh, The Temple Quarter of Vizima is strangely reminiscent of a quarrelsome dirty prostitute who, dis despite her dis disagreeable appearance and personality, remains somehow alluring. This might be because the uncomplicated illicit entertainment it offers is always a temptation. Beggars, shady characters, scowling poor folk, frustrated non-humans and of course the ladies occupy every corner. Recently, the Zima's temple quarter was cut off from the rest of the city uh, by the threat of epidemic. The few city guard patrols that come here try not to venture too far into the quarter's dark alleys, where brutal deeds take place each night. At the center of the Vizimian trade quarter, uh, temple quarter stands, stands the St. Lebiodas Hospital, the only place of solace for the poor and plague victims. Uh, alongside the hospital stands the headquarters of the Order of the Flaming Rose, which tries to combat the local crime. The Cloister of the Order, uh, this is really the one heaven of law and order in the temple quarter of Vizima. 
It is the cloister, a seat of the Order of the Flaming Rose. Crimson banners embroidered with a rose hung from its entrance. Only authorized personnel can entrance uh, uh, can enter. Inquiries should be dis di directed to Siegfried, whose office is in one of the buildings belonging to the Order. Triss's home. Uh, Triss lives in a corner building on a small square where a statue, where a statue plinth stands bereft of its monument. The statue itself, which bore the likeness of an elven philosopher, was recently melted down to make a new bell for the cloister of the Order of the Flaming Rose. The sorceress has decorated her home luxuriously, if not extravagantly. Uh, there are many expensive devices here, as well as magical components and equipment. Uh, Vizima. Uh, Vizima, the capital of Temeria, is the largest city in the kingdom. It is located on the shore of Lake Vizima, at the intersection of important trade routes, one of which is a waterway. Owing to a developed network of roads, the city draws considerable profit from trade. By King Falter's old orders, the city is governed by Burgermeister Velerad. Vizima is divided into three large districts. The poorest one is the Temple Quarter, where St. Lebiodas Hospital and the Cloister of the Flaming Rose are located. The Trade Quarter is home to the wealthiest and most important inhabitants, and both the Town Hall and the main marketplace are situated there. The oldest part of the city, the Old Vizima, has been recently converted into a ghetto for non-humans. Mm, Vizima Cemetery. I acquired a pass which allows me to enter the cemetery in Vizima. Zerikenia. Zerikenia is a mysterious land located far south. The northern kingdoms have very little to do with the realm. Not, not a lot is known about Zerikenia. Its climate is hot, exotic animals roam the lands, and the inhabitants worship dragons. Furthermore, Zerikenia is famous for its alchemists, who specialize in pyrotechnics, and for its tattooed warrior women, who are, who are skilled in the use of the saber. Um, monsters. Cockatrice. Uh, cockatrices are born of eggs laid by roosters consorting with other roosters. The egg must be incubated for 44 days by a toad, which is devoured by a little beast as soon as it hatches. Uh, a cockatrice hates everything that lives so fiercely that, it's, that its glance turns the living into stone. Only a bold adventurer with a mirror can deflect its deadly gaze and defeat, defeat the cockatrice. Mm, Algul. Algul's are ghouls which have been devouring corpses for m so many years that human flesh becomes irresistible and they begin to play on the, prey on the living. They are seen in crypts and battlefields, frequently surrounded by ghouls. Simple folk do not know the difference between the two types of scavengers, unlike witchers, who know that the Algul is more aggressive and a challenging opponent. Uh, Archaospor. Uh, some crimes are so terrible that they fill people with terror and offend the gods. The criminal's ill will and cruelty of the deed conceive a curse that bring the Archaospor to life. The beast attacks innocent creatures hatefully, trying to take vengeance until justice is done. Basilisk uh, Simple people call the basilisk king of the Rikania desert and often mistake it for a cockatrice. They claim that the beast, beast is filled with hatred towards all living things, that even its breath is venomous, and its glance turns uh, the unwary into stone. In the fairy tales, the only certain way to kill a basilisk is by holding a mirror in the front of its eyes to divert its deadly gaze. Witchers rely that it's far better to smash the mirror on the creature's head. Uh, Cemeter. Uh, much has been said about ghouls and graveyards, since they were encountered by common people in times of war in cemeteries. Cemeteries are rare, but when they appear in a necropolis, they, they take over. All ghouls respect them and must bow down to them. Devourer. Devourers are often called night witches because they resemble old ugly women and are famous for their, for their, for, for their witch-like viciousness. Uh, the creatures gorge themselves on human flesh, although they willingly eat carcasses. Above all, they crave flesh that is fl fresh and warm. Devour Devourers hunt after dark in groups that peasants refer to as sabbats. They like to deceive their victims and torture them, but there is no 
truth in the tales of their midnight flights on broomsticks and their gingerbread houses. A golem. Uh, once an absent-minded mage created a golem, animated by casting Azul's thunder, and ordered his new servant to fetch water before burying him himself in scholarly books. The golem kept carrying water day and night without pause, and ultimately flooded not only the mage's house, but the whole city. As you can see, my young students of the arts, the improper use of tools and a lack of elementary training may cause a tragedy. Annabel Randfield lectures on the security and hygiene in magic. Mm, Koshe. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the best way to describe a Koshe? Death. I would call it death. Uh, Nitrate. Mm, Nitrates are born of moonlight, wind, and the earth. Uh, uh, are born of moonlight, wind, and the earth cooling after the heat of day. They rise above the ground and whirl in a mad dance, which should not be seen by any mortal. If caught peeping, the mortal is blinded by moonlight and then taken into a circle and forced to dance until he expires, at times becoming a, noon a night wraith himself. Noon wraith. And noon wraiths are born uh, at high noon out of heat, sadness, and the sweat of plowmen. In the hot air above the fields, they gather to dance madly, creating air vortexes, but the spectres dislike being watched. Those who peep are forced to dance with them. Noon raids stop their dance when the sun goes down, once the abducted mortal is long dead from fear and exhaustion. Royal Wyvern The female royal wyvern is smaller but more cunning and venomous than her male counterpart. She can be aggressive towards both male and males and other females. She is a perfect example of how gender relations among humans have their source in the animal world. This is altogether not surprising. Master Doregrai, against the institution of marriage. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I don't remember, was he gay in the books? Uh, I, I guess that wouldn't make much sense. He wouldn't... Like, he wouldn't... Fe I, I don't think gay men... Uh, I mean gay men. Uh, the, the emphasis was wrong. Uh, I, I don't think homosexual men have a particularly strong reason to, like, engage in those haha marriage bad uh, jokes about women because they wouldn't be caught dead marrying a woman ever because obviously why would they uh, striga uh, where does it come from spells magic i have no idea sire the sages research those phenomena for us witchers it is enough to know that strong will may create them we also like to know how to fight them and kill them most frequently, yes. That's why we are usually f what we are usually paid for. Few want the spell lifted. People usually just want to be protected. If the monster has killed people, revenge might be another motive. Werewolf. Baron Wolfstein buried his face in his hands. His heart was throbbing. Suddenly the scent of his wife's blood and the blood of his children intensified. The Baron's body swelled as his muscles grew. His noble attire fell in tatters on the marble floor. My beloved, you are so hairy. Are you a werewolf? Bianca went pale. What about our love? Uh, in reply, she heard a terrifying roar. Daniel Stone, The Curse of Baron, Baron Wolfstein, and other love stories. Wild Hunt the Wild Hunt is a horde of spectres that roam the sky during the storms and in open and is an omen of disaster. The appearance of Wild Hunt foreshadows war and woe, much as a comet does. The spectral Wild Hunt sometimes appears in the nightmares of the cursed or those touched by destiny. Uh, wraith. If you want to get rid of a wraith, you must first find its body. Try searching on the unhallowed ground or in the corner of the cemetery where outlaws are buried. When you dig up the corpse, you will discover that it is not rotten and that it, there is blood on its lips. Pierce the corpse with an asp aspen stake. Cut off the head and place it be between the corpse's legs to make sure that the wraith will never return. Set the corpse on fire. One false step will meet your, mean your demise. 
uh, wyvern. Wyverns are unlucky to be frequently mistaken for dragons. Seeing a reptile approaching a flock of sheep, peasants panic. They expect it to breathe fire, massacre everyone and attack the local virgins. While it is true that wyverns hunt sheep, they neither breathe fire nor lay waste to whole villages, and they are completely, completely indifferent to virgins. Uh, fair enough. Uh, formula. Argentia. Uh, silver bring, brings ruin to all the beasts, but even a brave knight bearing a silver braid might not have enough strength to defy the mo most dreadful monsters. Uh, there is a way, however, to awaken the spirit of a silver sword by using the moon oil known as Argentia. Uh, black blood. In the distant past, mages working with witchers developed this potion specifically for using in fighting cemetery and crypt dwellers that drink the blood or eat the innards of the still living victims. Vic uh, witchers use black blood unwillingly because the potion only works when, when a monster began, begins to feast on their body. The transmuted blood proves to be a deadly drink. Mm, golden, or golden Oriole before fighting a venomous creature like a basilisk, a witcher drinks golden oriole to release enzymes that increase resistance to toxins. A truly cautious prepare a second dose in case of the opponent's poison somehow overcoming the, ex the, the resistance. Golems Pith Golems are usually described as unthinking constructs and have effectively become synonymous with insentience, yet, the only, yet only the most powerful mages in know how much effort is required to cast a spell on a golem's stone heart to force the creature to follow even the simplest commands, renegade mages somehow learned to draw on the complex magic contained in a golem's heart to produce a powerful mutagenic potion that affects witchers' brains. Insectoid oil. Uh, huge vis, kikimors and other insectoids suffer greater damage from weapons coated in this poison invented by the witchers. The witchers also use insectoid oil to rid their fortresses of bugs and parasites. Mm, the kiss. And this potion affects, aff affects the witchers' mutated bodies by forcing their blood to congeal almost in instantaneously. It is often consumed before taking on monsters known to in inflict hemorrhaging wounds. Uh, Maribor Forest. According to an old tale, this potion was first made by the Dryads in the forest of Brokilon. The formula was obtained by the Druids of Maribor Forest, who then passed it to their brethren in the other cor corners of the world. The formula also reached Kermorin, where the practically minded witchers began producing the potion using the ingredients obtained from monster carcasses. carcasses. Uh, Petri's filter. Throughout his life, the mage Petri sought a way to strengthen his magical powers. He failed in this endeavor, but several interesting potions came, came, came about through his attempts. One of these, known as Petri's Filter, is so useful to witchers with magical skills. Witchers who prefer hand-to-hand -hand combat rarely use fi Petri's Filter, however, especially since it's highly toxic, toxic and thus renders the use of other potions impossible. A wolf Wolf is widely used by the witchers employing the group style. The potion improves the imbiber's precision, meaning that the witcher's slashing blade finds its, its opponent's soft spots all the more easily. Mm, okay, I won't be reading about ingredients because that seems pointless. I'll just click on them so that they are unhighlighted. Um, here in the menu. The Glossary. Uh, Codriger and Fenn, a famous pair of lawyers who ran a firm in Dorian until both partners died tragically under mysterious circumstances. Um, at its height, the firm was retained by people from all over Temeria. If anyone had difficulties, troubles or problems, they went to Codriger, Cod Codringer and Fenn, so the firm's clients quickly, quickly received proof of dishonesty and malpractice by, by their business partner. They could count on receiving credit from a bank without insurance or security. Uh, as one long list of creditors, they would be the only one to extract what was due from the company de declaring bankruptcy. 
their son would be released from a dungeon and cleared from all of the charges uh, based either on irrefutable evidence or on the lack thereof, because if the evidence existed, it disappeared mysteriously. While witnesses retracted any earlier testimony, the wife's lover or the daughter's suitor would suffer complicated fractures in three, li three limbs, including at least one upper one, all as a result of an unfortunate accident, an enemy with a grudge against or some other troublesome individual would soon stop being a nuisance, often vanishing into thin air. That's how Codringer and Fenn worked. A conjunction of the spheres, a cataclysm that occurred uh, 1500 years ago, trapping in our dimension many unnatural creatures, including ghouls, graveyards, and vampires. The beasts have no ecological niches of their own and are merely relics of a bygone time. According to elven lore, humans arrived during the conjunction, their own world, world having been destroyed. These humans' ancestors learned how to harness the power of primordial chaos, and thus the first human wizards were born. Looking for the place in the world, humans took arms against the elder races, who were unable to withstand the barbarians and ultimately surrendered. This is how humans came to rule the world. A cult of Melitele. Among the numerous fates of the Nordlings, the most widespread is the cult of Melitele, the goddess in three forms, a young girl, a woman, and a crone. Melitele is a mother goddess, extending her care over her children. Her following is not, as, not solely composed of women. Men pray to her as well. Clerics of Melitele preach, preach love and peace. They run many hospitals, shelters, and orphanages. Cult of the Lionhead Spider Koram Akter, called the Lionhead Spider, is a cruel deity who expects bloody sacrifice from his worshippers. The cult is, a, is banned and there are but a few places in the world where its adherents can openly declare their faith. Temeria strives to eradicate the belief in the Lionhead Spiders and the cultists are tried as murderers. Uh, Dimeritium is a rare and precious metal uh, with an interesting feature it represses the transfer of magical energy. A bluish alloy of iron and dimeritium is used to produce handcuffs and necklaces. Those who wear them cannot cast spells or use magic in any way. There are known cases, however, of extraordinarily powerful sorceresses, uh, sorcerers managing to overcome the shield generated by dimeritium. Uh, elves. After the gnomes, elves are the eldest race on the continent. They created a magnificent civilization and the greatest human cities like Vizima or Oxenfurt were built upon the elven ruins. Elves also have a special affinity of magic, although their magic is different from that of humans. Elves are long-lived, yet that their reproductive period of their lives is, ends quite early, and moreover, they reproduce much more slowly than humans. This is why they were, de they were defeated, the reason why they lost their preeminence pre in the world. Today only two enclaves of the race remain, the Blue Mountains, where the elves suffer pri privation and are dying out, and Dolblatana, the Valley of the Flowers, which is ruled by the sorceress Enid Anglenna. The Valley of the Flowers is a dependency of Nilfgaard. Elves are a beautiful and a long-lived race. They have pointed ears, sharp features and possess no canine teeth. Elves are arrogant and proud, and over many centuries they have developed a high and sophisticated culture. Few remain today, however, uh, and they are in constant conflict with human civilization. This is why many young elves, eager to fight for their rights, join the Skoyahal commando units. The elves tell the story of Lara Dorin and Kregan of Lod, an er elven sorcerer, sorceress and a human wizard, the legendary, legendary lovers who formed the first union between the two races. Elves claim that the relationship proved that peaceful co coexistence between the races was possible, at least until the humans treacherously killed the wizard and banished Lara. Thus, according to the elves, human hostility, possessiveness and aggression was first, first demonstrated. These barbarian qualities made coexistence with humans impossible, and the lover's tragic end triggered a war that continues to this day. Uh, elves don't discuss their faith in the presence of humans, because they think that barbarians would be unable to grasp its philosophical and mystical subtleties. Most humans, on the other hand, don't care about elven beliefs. In, fa 
It is a fact that some elves believe in the mother goddess, who seems to be an embodiment of the goddess Melitele. Humans have their own version of the legend of Larador and Cregan of Lod, which differs greatly from that of the elves. An elf and a human came together just, just after the conjunction of the spheres and the rise of the human race. The legendary lovers became a symbol for the peaceful coexistence of the two races until some elves, jealous of Lara's attentions, treacherously killed the barbarian who had dared to get involved with their kinswoman. In the human version, Lara is portrayed as a witch, Kregan's death resulted in much treachery and scheming, and thus the hostility that exists today between the races is the elves' fault. Fistic is an illegal narcotic that is widely used in Temeria. It takes the form of a white powder and is highly addictive. It can be manufactured only by professionals with the use of complicated alchemical ingredients. Uh, the Lodge of Sorceresses was founded after the mutiny of Tanet Island as a substitute, substitute for the Council of Sorceresses or Sorcerers. The Founder's aim was to bring the war between Nilfgaard and the Northern Kingdom to a close while maintaining the major's influence of the feral fate of the world. The organization remains active to this day. It is effectively an association of the most powerful female mages, both from the Northern and Southern realms. The Lodge has significant political influence, although its activities are not entirely understood by the public. Uh, magic is the art of bending chaos. To one's will, practitioners of the art must master a vast and complicated corpus of knowledge, and it seems women have a special predisposition for it. Sorcerers seek out talented children and teach them. The power bound in a spell formula must be used for he might be used for healing, teleportation, destruction, creating illusions and altering form. The most famous spells are named after their creators, for example, Azul's Thunder or Marigold's Hailstorm. Thanks to magic, it is also possible to create magical glyphs and amulets, such as the Witcher's medallions. The Witcher's signs are a very simple spell, uh, mostly kinetic or mind-influencing. To use them, one needs to concentrate as well as do a hand gesture. Casting signs is not time-consuming, so Witchers use them while hunting monsters. Magically gifted children are born all, all over the world. They are called sources. The Brotherhood of Sorcerers was charged with finding and training such children. Descendants of Lara Doren are a special case. Their magical gifts are very strong. They can travel through time and space and release the pure energy of chaos. Those powers are wild and difficult to control though and are activated in the moments of stress while surprising their possessor. The power used to create spells is drawn from elements Fire is the best, but simultaneously the most dangerous elemental source. Mages who special specialize in the magic of power, uh, uh, magic of fire, often achieve great power, but they pay a price for it. As fire addicts, they often suffer burns or even die engulfed in flames. The, the essence of fire becomes their essence, which makes them vulnerable to water. Mm, medical science. Uh, for centuries, diseases have plagued mankind, yet when Jan Becker subjected the power to his will, people gained a powerful weapon in their fight against disease. Mm, magical study of viruses and bacteria, the way germs spread, as well as genetics. Uh, the research is used by medics who set up hospitals and produce increasingly effective medicines. There are also magical potions capable of healing wounds and internal injur injuries. Many magic users, such as Marty Sodegren or Visenna, have become healers traveling the world and using their magic for the good of others. Autopsies are not universally approved in a criminal investigation. However, experts acknowledge the value of forensically examining a corpse after witnesses have been questioned and the experts consulted. An autopsy can provide invaluable information on the identity of the victim and on the precise means by which a crime was committed. While performing an autopsy, you should ask detailed questions based on the knowledge you possess. By rejecting impossibilities one by one, you may ultimately find that the truth lies in the most unlikely of places. Uh, Order of the Flaming Rose was established after the war with Nilfgaard by a, by a charismatic leader, Jacques de Aldersberg, one of the f 
one of the foundations of the on the foundations of the deteriorating order of the White Rose, the Alderberg's aim was to protect people from monsters and other evils and to promote a belief in the Eternal Fire. The Order's headquarters are uh, located in Vizima, with numerous command co commanderies spread across the whole of Temeria. The book People of Shadow of the Shadows reveals some secrets uh, regarding the genesis of the Order of the Flaming Rose. According to the author, the Order was established with the help of a Redanian intelligence service to counter the sorceresses who were organizing themselves and growing into power. Furthermore, the author believes that Redania intentionally refused to grant a charter to the main commandery of the Order, thus preventing a strong organization from planting roots within the country's borders. Mm, okay, so that's all of the journal, journal reading for now and normal game gameplay will resume from the next one for now that's all for this one and i will see you in the next one bye